When I was a kid back in elementary school, the best class was of course computer lab, where in theory we learned technological literacy, and by that I mean I'd play insane aquarium. With the tagline, feed fish and fight aliens, the point of the game is, uh, well, you feed fish and you fight aliens. Originally a web-based indie game from 2001, it was picked up by PopCap Games and a deluxe version was made, and it's even on Steam, and somehow I have 135 hours on it, wow. But anyway, the title of the video isn't Insane Aquarium A Retrospective, it's something like ripping off Insane Aquarium and Godot, because I want to try my hand at recreating the formula of the original game on my own. What is the formula exactly? The game starts and you have two fish. You click to feed the fish, which costs a small amount of money. The fish drop coins, which you collect in order to keep feeding them, to buy new fish, or to unlock upgrades. You also need a certain amount of money to beat each level. There are more expensive fish than just goldfish. For example, in the first level of the game, there are piranhas, which need to eat your goldfish to survive, but drop a lot more money than goldfish do. And of course, occasionally an alien will appear and try to eat your fish unless you click it to death. So there's the outline of what I'm going to do in this video. Feed fish, get coins, get bigger fish that eat the smaller fish, and fight off alien invasions. And boom, here it is. So that's it. Uh, video done. <laughs> okay, please, please stay though, okay? I'll, I'll replace the programmer art soon, okay? I, I swear. I made a simple state machine for the fish to program their AI. Currently, they have two states that they switch between. There's the idle state, where they just kind of drift until they stop moving, and the wandering state, where they move to a random spot on the screen. Here's some debug UI I added for tracking what state the fish are in. The next AI behavior will be the feeding state, where the fish will search for food. For that, of course, we first need there to be food. Uh, please, you're, you're still here, right? I, I will replace the programmer art. Okay, I, I will. I gave the fish a hunger meter, which constantly ticks down every frame from 1 down to 0. When it's less than 0.6, I tell them to switch to their feeding state so that they start looking for food, and if it reaches 0, they enter the dead state. So currently, we can click to drop food, it falls down, fish go for it. Nice. When hungry, I'm just tinting them green as a visual indicator, and when they die, I flip them upside down and have them sink to the bottom of the tank before despawning. For this, I have a script on them that becomes active when they enter the dead state, and that despawns the fish if it doesn't move for an entire second. This only happens when they hit the bottom of the tank and stop moving. Uh, the last thing remaining to get us to our first actual gameplay loop is having the fish drop money, which can then be used to buy the food, feed the fish, they drop more money, you buy more fish, etc. So here's the fish and they're, they're dropping money. Uh, hmm, that, uh, no. No, still no, that's, that's not good at all. Okay, there, there's fish, they eat food, they drop money. Everything falls way too fast though, I'll, I'll get around to adjusting that. Now listen, we're, we're almost out of danger now, okay? Just, just one last bit of programmer art, I swear. Here, I'm getting the food chain working. So goldfish eat the fish food, and piranhas eat the goldfish. The trade-off being that the diamonds dropped by the piranhas are worth a lot more than the coins dropped by the fish. The code for eating food is the same for goldfish as it is for piranhas. It just takes a node 2D and has the fish go towards it. Once that node enters an area 2D in front of the fish, they eat it, replenishing their hunger meter and removing the node from the scene. For the goldfish, this node 2D is always a food node, and for the piranhas, it is always a goldfish node. And there, look, the programmer art, programmer art's gone. Wait, no, I, 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 I probably should, I shouldn't use this. I, I should make my own art. Okay, so feed fish, fight aliens, right? We can feed fish, time for the aliens. Boom, that's aliens. Uh, they're just slightly modified piranhas in the code that I wrote, just that they get hungry much faster than a piranha does, and they cannot die from starvation. They can eat both goldfish and piranhas. In the same way that fish occasionally drop money while alive, aliens will drop money but only once they die. Now it was kind of hard clicking on things when it was so zoomed out like this, so I made everything a lot more closed in, which admittedly is how the actual game I'm basing this off of is scaled. I can definitely see why they chose that scale, it makes it much easier to click on all the coins. It's almost like the game was well made or something. Now I've set it up so that clicking on the aliens damages them, 
and it also pushes them away from where they're clicked. This way you can sort of direct them away from your fish so they don't eat them. I added some particles where you're shooting your laser beam, uh, but you can't really see it too well here since I, I forgot to capture the mouse cursor. Uh, l let me fix that. There, uh, <laughs> mouse cursor. Of course, the aliens kind of appear out of nowhere, and there's not enough visual feedback when you're killing them. Now that the game mechanics are all here, I'm going to work on the visuals. For some visual feedback, I've added a portal that appears and the aliens warp in through it. I just copy-pasted part of the portal shader I made when I made a portal gun in Godot. I have another video about that, just enough to make a wobbly looking oval. I also copy-pasted quite a bit of code from my game Asteroid Arcade, it's on Steam Play it maybe, uh, for handling inputs and managing the game scenes. It's really nice having a backlog of my own stuff that I can just steal from when I make new games. And last up, sound does wonders for a game. I reused some random sounds from Asteroid Arcade again, so that's the UI sounds, the coin collection sound, and the laser firing sounds. For the other sounds, I found them on freesounds.org and made slight modifications on my own. And that's it, that's, that's a game. I'd release it on my itch.io page, but Godot 4 doesn't support web builds yet in the C-sharp version, so maybe someday once they figure that out. I also have some ideas on how I want to go forward with this sort of prototype and make it my own, uh, which I might cover in the future if I don't get bored of this idea and move on to the next thing that I think of. Uh, for a teaser of what's potentially to come though, here is an incredible feature I've made. I made a frog. Wow, that's amazing. 10 out of 10 original game idea, do not steal. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye bye.